You can have any colour you like, as long as it's blue. B-Lynx EQ12 looked to be one of the first minis to be available with multiple colour options, but unfortunately, that's not happening. Boo! I did really like those grey ones. Oh well, whatever. No point crying over spilled paint, right? But B-Link did send me a blue sample of the EQ12 featuring the latest budget Intel N100 CPU. It's pre-built, starting at $239 for the 8GB DDR5 model, or $259 for the 16GB model. Both come with a 500GB NVMe drive. I'ma tell you straight up, $20 extra is cheap for the upgraded 16GB of memory. Go for that one, damn it! The outer shell itself is nothing special. Looks similar to the Mini S12 and is still plastic. What has changed, apart from the logo in the corner, is the port selection. The front is the same with dual USB 3, 5 gigabit, and an audio jack. But on the back is a USB C port with display out. A very welcome change. There's one more USB 3, 5 gigabit, dual 2.5 gigabit LAN, and dual HDMI 2.0. So that means Triple displays at 4K 60Hz, baby. In the box, you'll find the usual B-Link accessories. Short and long HDMI, power supply, manual, monitor mount, and screws. What else do you need? Well, I guess a hand job would be nice, but I'll take what I can get. Let's have a look see inside. There are four exposed screws to remove, rip off the lid, and oh my god, it's a mini PC. Sorry, was trying to fake excitement like all those cringe YouTubers. Fuck clowns. Inside, we have a 2.5 inch SATA drive slot and a fan for the SSD. Another three screws to remove the fan plate and two more for the SATA slot. Watch out for the ribbon cable and the fan cable. I'm very happy to see a DDR5 slot and crucial memory is included. Older Lake N CPUs support single channel only. I just wanted to point that out. The 500GB NVMe drive is another AZW special, and there's an Intel Wi-Fi 6 card underneath. Each B-Link EQ12 comes with Windows 11 Pro, but when I tested Ubuntu off a USB stick, only Wi-Fi wasn't working. Chrome OS Flex failed to boot. Benchmark time! The N100 has great CPU performance for a budget processor, and I wanted to see how the B-Link EQ12 compares against the Morphine M9 with the same CPU. In Cinebench R23, the EQ12 takes the lead by 2%. In Multicore, the difference between the two is insignificant. For the video encoding test, the EQ12 was under 2% faster. 3 Mark's DX11 benchmark result for the EQ12 was a 3% improvement over the Morphine M9, while in DX12, it was behind by 1%. The Gen 3 NVMe storage drive underperforms in sequential read and write speeds due to the M.2 slot being limited to X1 speed. But it's still faster than SATA drives, and the older Lake N chips only have so many PCIe lanes to go around. Before we jump into video and game tests, I want to go over TDP or thermal design power, as there are many comments getting tripped up on this figure. There's a reason I don't mention TDP in my reviews anymore. I'll make a few points here. First, Intel specifies a base TDP and not the turbo, which I don't think is useful at all. The N100 has a base TDP of 6 watts and the N95 has 15 watts. So the N95 is faster, right? No, as they'll turbo boost much higher. They have the same max turbo frequency, so if both are under ideal thermal conditions, they should perform similarly which is what I've shown in the benchmarks already. If the N100 is almost one third the TDP, how would that make sense? For me at least, TDP would be useful if it showed the max CPU power draw at each configuration. If that wasn't bad enough, Intel, AMD, and Nvidia all calculate TDP differently, so they can't be directly compared. Useless much? There's a Gamers Nexus video on it if you're interested in learning more. So what I look for is performance data together with power draw from the wall, and use comparisons to see if the CPU is performing up to spec. At least in B-Link's marketing of the EQ12, they've used the boost figure of 25 watts instead of the 6 watt base. I mention this because I upped the boost to Intel's 30 watt power limit figure and managed to push the CPU a bit further. 
I'll show you how to do that later. While single core performance was unaffected, multi core shot up past the 3000 mark in Cinebench with a 4% increase. Oh, I feel a huge stiffy coming on. <laughs> For video encoding, we have a new wiener, an extra 6%. Aw oh, yeah. As with the other Alder Lake N CPU minis, pushing the power limit only improved CPU performance. Graphics were completely unaffected. I've had requests to check out AV1 video performance, so let's start with that. No joke, after going through like 30 videos on YouTube, I finally found one that actually had AV1 support. Apart from a few frames dropped right at the beginning after pressing play, 4K 60fps playback was flawless. Cool stuff. YouTube's VP9 codec will drop frames here and there. Alright, let's check out some games. I'm using the higher power limit. The Morphine M9 didn't have any CPU power options in the BIOS, so it doesn't get a power limit boost. Valorant is a good title to test these budget minis with, as it pushes both CPU and GPU performance. It could be just this map, but the gaming experience of the B-Link EQ12 was easily the best of any N100 mini PC I've used so far. While the frame rate sometimes dropped to the 50s like with the Morphine, it held up better overall and even went above 100 FPS. CSGO is GPU heavy and the N100 struggles to beat that meat. There are areas in this map where the frame rate turns to shite but it is mostly playable. League of Legends at medium runs nicely with the frame rate staying above 70 FPS. The Morphine M9 fell into the 60s. Emulation wise, Gran Turismo 4 benefits from DDR5 holding 60 FPS until it comes to areas where the dips start and then makes it unplayable. Need for Speed Most Wanted looks to perform better on the B-Link as well. Same with Mario Kart Wii, which almost hits the locked 60 FPS. Maximum CPU temp hits 78C at stock settings and 82 with the power limit increased. So, 4 extra degrees for around a 4% improvement. I'll take it. The included NVMe drive stayed cool throughout, which is no surprise with the extra cooling. Noise levels are very low and barely audible. Increasing the power limit didn't cause more fan noise either. Idle power draw hit 10 watts from the wall. All Alder Lake N CPU minis are up over the previous generation. Max power draw was about as expected at 33 watts out of the box, and 34 with a power limit increase. So if you want that extra few percent of CPU power, mash the delete key when powering on the mini. Go to advanced, power and performance, CPU power management control, view configure turbo options, set PL1 to 30,000 and PL2 to the same or above it. It doesn't really make a difference. Save and exit. Alrighty then, let's finish up with the pros and cons. I'm impressed by the B-Link EQ12. Performance is great. Same with cooling and noise levels. It has a pretty good selection of ports. The DDR5 RAM upgrade is cheap and recommended. But I would have liked to see the different color options and the plastic box pales in comparison to the Morphine M9 metal shell. But I guess that doesn't matter all that much when it wins out on pretty much everything else. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the B-Link EQ12 is the budget mini PC to beat from the older Lake and minis I've reviewed so far. And God knows we'll see many more in the coming months. The EQ12 gets a thumbs up recommendation. Don't need fancy ports or much graphics performance? Then do check out my B-Link Mini S12 review which comes in at a lower price point. Cheers!